Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. It is Catherine and today we're gonna do a little bit of the art side of hobbies and fun things. So we have been redesigning and really mostly my mom has been redesigning this room that I'm standing in right now. Um, we're turning it into kind of a library, kind of a fun sort of sitting room area. It's looking really nice, but there's a picture that my mom has had her eye on for a really long time from Hobby Lobby and it's really cute. You have to know, my mom loves dogs. They're her favorite animal ever. She absolutely adores dogs. So, let's show you this. We got this picture from Hobby Lobby to hang up in the library because it's a dog which she loves with cute little glasses and it's sleeping on books. Here's the problem. My mom does not like the titles on the books because she's not interested in fashion and Paris just isn't on her list of places that, you know, she wants to go. So she said, hey, Catherine, you paint, can you fix it? So what you have to understand is I have only really been experimenting with painting since maybe August, September-ish of 2020. It's February of 2021. And I've been playing around with watercolor. Watercolor's not going to work on this. So, to try to make something that my mother likes, to change the titles so that they don't drive her insane, and we're gonna personalize it a little bit and put our dog's names in the titles of these books. Um, I'm gonna use acrylic paint on canvas, on a pre-made, pre-done canvas for the very first time ever. And I'm going to attempt not to ruin this. But really, is anyone gonna be surprised if I ruin this? No, no, we're not. Because I've never worked with acrylic before and I don't know what I'm doing. So. Come join me on this adventure, or misadventure. Here we go. So the very first thing I need to do is apply some gesso to the part of the painting that I'm going to cover over. A uh, quick Google search revealed that gesso is a type of um, canvas primer. And the way I've heard it referred to is usually used with acrylic paint. So I'm assuming this is what I need to use. Just looking at the directions, making sure that everything is the way it needs to be. And it looks like we're good. Just taking my time reading the directions. And I'm just going to cover the bottom three books. I'm not going to do the top book, the white one that the dog is laying on, because I don't want to take a chance on accidentally covering up the dog um, in any way because I definitely will not be able to fix that <laughs> if anything happens to that dog. So I'm just going to shake up the gesso really well. It didn't actually say to on the package, but I'm of the belief that, you know, a good shake never hurt anything. So we're going to give it a nice shake. Definitely more than necessary. And now... I'm just going to open it up. Now I'm using a number four round brush here. I was very surprised to find that there wasn't a protective like piece of foil or plastic or something over top of the gesso. It was just straight up open. I don't know. I've never worked with this stuff before, so maybe that's how it all comes, but it just seems weird to me that none of the paints or the gesso or anything like that has a protective layer when you first bring it home from the store. But anyway, I'm just going to dip straight into the bottle, because who has time for palettes? And in order to make sure that I'm not 
going to be going outside the lines, so to speak. Um, just outlining, using the gesso to make an outline. And that way I can cover without having to worry quite so much about where I need to stop. I was quite surprised to find that it ended up being a lot more transparent than I expected. I was under the impression that covering the books with the gesso would basically make it so that I couldn't see the books at all underneath. And as it turns out, the books still showed through, which ends up being a really good thing later. Um, with the white background, it's it's good to have that foundation of okay this is where the books start and where they end and if you are interested in maybe doing some acrylic painting yourself and you find that the white gesso is just too too white or it blends into the background too much or for whatever reason you just need more contrast for um whatever project you're doing i have seen i do not have any but i have seen that um gesso apparently comes in a few different colors so if you needed a darker color or a color that just provided you with more visual contrast in order to make it work for you um it does exist I've never used it this is the first time i've used gesso of any kind i've certainly never actually seen it myself but from what I understand it does exist but again thankfully this ended up being a little more transparent than I was expecting it to be so I still had the books underneath to use as a guide but I'm just covering this lightly so that I have a nice surface to work on with this canvas already technically being finished, I don't really know what the coating is on it. And I wanted to make sure that I had a nice, solid um, sort of surface <laughs> for the acrylic paint I'll be using later to stick to. on the finishing touches you're going to see my head here and there throughout this video sometimes i needed to get down close so i could really see what i was doing making sure everything's nice and covered And that is the gesso coating. So I let this dry and it dries a lot faster than I expected. So now it is time to mix some paint. I'm gonna start with the top book, which is the pink one. Figure working from the top down will be better because then while the top dries, I can be working on the, ne the next book down. I don't have to worry about getting my arm in it. And I have some Liquitex paint here. I have a really nice pink. I have some white, because who doesn't need white? Um, I'm just gonna mix those two together. I chose paints that had the highest light fast rating I could find. I really didn't want this painting to fade over time. Um, and I have recently learned that light fastness is a thing. <laughs> And something to consider, depending on what you're doing with your artwork. So, to make sure this didn't fade, so I don't have to do this again, I chose I chose colors that had the highest light fast rating I could I could find with them. Um, 
that gave me a nice blue, a nice sort of magenta-y pink, and a yellow that I then mixed together. And I also used Payne's Gray and white, but those come in later. So now I'm just taking that pink. And once again, just as I did with the gesso itself, I am outlining the book. I'm using that same number four round brush. Technically a square brush probably would have worked better, but again, I wanted to make sure that I could kind of draw those outlines a little more easily. And I didn't want to end up making a huge mess of everything. So the the smaller round brush here gave me more control over what I was doing and where the paint was going. I was also surprised this uh, acrylic paint was a lot thicker than I expected it to be. So I'm just painting the book. I'm starting with the spine. And... Then what I'll do is I'll mix a little bit more white into my sort of base pink color because the light is kind of coming down from the top. So I want the, the top of the book to be a lighter shade of pink than the bottom of the book. So once I get the spine of the book fully painted, then we will move on to the top and the highlights. So I'm just mixing in a little bit more white here. Want a nice light pink for the top. Something I completely forgot to take into account because I am used to working with watercolor is that watercolor tends to dry lighter. So if you want a darker, sort of deeper color in watercolor, um, then you're generally supposed to have a more pigmented color or have a, a just a darker value color to start with because it will tend to dry lighter. Um, turns out acrylics dry a little bit darker. So I was expecting this to actually dry a bit lighter than it ended up drying and it turned out fine. But just for future reference, acrylics dry darker <laughs> where watercolors dry lighter. So there's that. Now I'm just adding some highlights to give the book a little bit of dimension. All right, so now I'm going to clean my brush off and it's time to work on the next book down. I want this to be kind of a dusty purple color. So I'm just going to take my blue and mix it right in with the pink that I was using for the top book. Going for kind, uh, kind of a lavender color. It's not the color that I ended up with, but that was the thought. It's looking a little too bright, so I added a bit of Payne's Gray. I'm really just guessing here. I'm not trying to match any colors perfectly or anything. I'm just trying to come up with colors that look nice together. And mixing everything around a lot, probably more than I really need to, but I like stirring things, so that's what we're doing here. I 
All right, once I'm happy with that sort of dusty purple blue color, I am going to start painting the second book. As you see, I'm still adjusting a little bit. Took me a while to find just the right shade. But now that I like it, I'm just going to rinse off my brush so that I don't have too much paint from having mixed my colors. And let's move the painting over here and start on the second book. I'm doing the exact same thing as the first book. I am outlining first, sort of both edges, both hard edges. And then I'm outlining where the spine of the book and the top of the book meet. Again, this just gives me a much better idea of where to start and stop with my colors. And that way I don't end up with any sort of wonky lines or stray brush strokes. I don't know if you can hear the dog barking. That is my mother's dog, Zoe. <laughs> seems appropriate that she's barking here. So once I have my book outlined, I'm just going to, once again, fill in with my color. I really love this dark, dusty blue color that I ended up with. I had intended more of a lavender color, but I'm really happy with how this color actually turned out. I think it complements the the pink above it nicely but maybe I'm wrong let me know what you think of the color combination in the comments what colors would you have chosen Alright, so now that I have the base sort of blue color down, I'm adding some more white so that I can do the top of the book. And just doing the same idea as I did with the pink book, adding white until I get a color that I think looks nice and something that I think is light enough for it to make sense to have the top of the book with the light shining on it. And I'm just going to carefully fill it in. There's really not much point in doing an outline for this part because it's so thin that doing a full outline like I did for the spine of the book, that basically is the cover of the book. So there's really not much point to outlining here. But I did start again with the outer edges where the book itself actually stops just so that I have a good idea of where to stop and I don't have messy edges. We don't like messy edges. And then I'm just taking some white and kind of mixing it into the still wet base color on the painting itself to add the highlights. So one thing I've noticed about acrylic as I was working on this project was that acrylic stays wet longer than watercolor, I think. And it also is a little easier to mix colors together as you go. So because my paint was still thick and wet, I was able to just mix them, mix the highlight gently into the book itself. So we're starting with a clean palette this time. And now I'm going to mix together the yellow oxide and the blue. I'm going for a dusty green color here. And this was a lot of fun to make. <laughs> I think I've said before, I enjoy mixing, so <laughs> this was fun. I'm going to add a little Payne's Gray to darken it up a bit. Make it not quite so... Mm, not quite so construction paper green-ish, but more of a natural green. 
Again, just like a nice sort of dusty green, perfect for a book cover. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry my brush off. And now it's time to start painting that bottom book. And again, I'm just going back in with the same method as before, outlining the book so that I know where my edges are and then filling in the middle, still using that same number four pointed round brush so that I have as much control as I need over my brush strokes and my lines and where my color is gonna actually end up. Again, I could have bought a green, but I didn't want to buy a whole bunch of colors because I didn't know if I was going to enjoy working with acrylic and I didn't know if I would end up using it a whole lot after this so I didn't want to have a ton of extra colors and be stuck with them um, but again I also wanted to make sure whatever I chose was very light fast and once I started getting into the purples and the greens the light fast rating was dropping and so I figured rather than trying to find the perfect green that was already light fast, I would just take the colors I had in my hand already, which were the yellow, the blue, and the magenta. Those had excellent light fast ratings, so I would just go ahead and use those. And that worked out really well, and I ended up being able to make some colors that I think look really nice together, instead of just finding a premixed color and, you know, putting up with it. <laughs> Or um, trying, ending up with a bunch of extra paint that I really probably wouldn't ever use. So same deal as before, I'm just adding some white into my green for that top part of the book. I'm just going to paint the top now. I have to say, this was a very pleasant experience. I actually really enjoyed working with this paint. So who knows? I might end up using um, acrylic paint more than I thought I might. Now, just as before, I'm taking a little bit of white and sort of mixing it into the still wet paint on the canvas itself to create my highlights. I'm just putting highlights in wherever they seem like they would be appropriate. Just trying to bring a little bit of dimension to these books. These are supposed to be old books after all. All right, now that that is finished, it is time to do the lettering. This is where things got really tricky. Um, in order to make the letters even and spaced in a way that would not drive my mother crazy. We ended up um, completely going off the rails here. <laughs> and instead of using a paintbrush and um, like drawing the outlines of the letters and everything so that I could paint over them, um, we took some Archer and Olive Acrylograph paint pens that I happen to have for journaling and use those to write the title of each book. It showed up a lot better and it was a lot easier to control. And this way, my mother could actually do the lettering. 
I would have done the lettering myself, except again, this project is for her and it's something that she has to see and, you know, enjoy every day. And so her doing the lettering ensured that, um, because she has depth perception and normal visual fields and it ensured that she would come up with something that she actually liked and that was spaced a lot more evenly than I could space it. Um, it also <laughs> means that if the titles are off in any way, shape or form, it's not my fault <laughs> and I'm good with that. So sometimes, you know, just take the take the help where you can get it you don't have to do everything yourself especially if it's a project for someone else and you know that it's going to be really difficult to you know, do the actual writing portion and make it even or have something perfectly centered and you know someone else can do it better if that person is willing to do it and you come up with a better outcome and especially where it's a gift, go for it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with taking help. My mother is, of course, also taking pictures as she does this. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't get it all cut out. Um, so you're you're seeing her camera in there also, because she loves taking pictures and documenting those kinds of things. These paint pens, by the way, worked fantastically for this project. I will put a link to these particular pens in the description box if anyone is interested in them. None of these products that I'm mentioning, by the way, are sponsoring this video in any way, shape or form. They're just what we ended up using. Some of it was what was available and some of it was just what worked. But everything actually worked quite well, so. My mother's just figuring out the placement for the final book title. And for our book titles, <laughs> we took um, inspiration from classic books so we have Life of Zoe. Zoe is my mother's dog. Then we have Prince Caleb, who is my guide dog. And then um, Legend of Sleepy Cosby. Cosby is my brother's guide dog. And we picked titles that we thought sort of matched each dog's personality also. So Zoe's just kind of herself. <laughs> and Caleb is you know, a handsome boy and he knows it <laughs> and Cosby just wants to take a nap. <laughs> To finish off the book titles, I took some rubber stamps with paw prints and cute little sayings. Um, and for Prince Caleb, of course, we have a crown. And I took the acrylic paint, just some Payne's Gray this time for Zoe's title, Life of Zoe. She gets a Payne's Gray paw print and we attempted a cute little saying. I honestly don't remember what it is now. Um, but it wasn't really working. The paint was a little thick. The canvas was a little floppy. The stamp was a little small. There were all kinds of reasons why it really wasn't working. And I mean, it's not like stamps are really meant to be used with 
acrylic paint, nice thick acrylic paint, so I'm not surprised it didn't work, but it didn't. So the paw print and the crown were really the two that worked best here. And just before I stamped on the canvas itself, I made sure to test out my stamps on a scrap piece of paper. So I knew how much paint to add and then made sure I wouldn't smudge everything. All right, everyone, it's done. Here is the painting in all of its completed glory. Oh, this was a team effort between my mother and myself and I'm very happy with how it turned out. More importantly, my mother is very happy with how it turned out since this was her project, really her idea um, and really it was for her. So she's happy with it, I'm happy with it and there it is. All right. I hope you all have an awesome week and if you would like to see more random content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video, give it a big old thumbs up and leave a comment telling me what titles would you have put on these books? Hmm. What would you have done? Uh, if you have any suggestions for other content you'd like to see from me, feel free to leave that in the comments as well. And until next time, see ya!